today I'm gonna talk about another product from VideoProc that I consider worth checking out. And the product I'm gonna talk about today is VideoProc Converter. So part of the reason I'm talking about VideoProc Converter is this does pair nicely with a recent video of mine where I show you the best settings for no edit GoPro footage. So these settings are designed for those of you that would like to shoot clips on your GoPro and then share those clips with family, friends, social media. So in the past, I've told you about another product from VideoProc known as VideoProc Vlogger. And VideoProc Vlogger is great free software for those of you that want to edit GoPro footage and put it together into one finished product. But what about those cases where you just want to share that one individual GoPro clip? Maybe it's 10 seconds long, maybe it's 30 seconds long, and maybe you just wanna do a little bit of touch up on it before you share it. This is where a VideoProc Converter becomes a great tool to have. With VideoProc Converter, you can do things such as stabilize the clip, remove fisheye, you can cut the clip, if you have a little bit of the clip you wanna cut out, you can also merge two clips together. In today's video, I'm going to highlight four different functions you can do with Video Proc Converter that will help you prepare your GoPro clips and make them the best possible clips for sharing. The four functions I'm gonna show you today are basically the tip of the iceberg with what this software can do. I've linked to Video Proc Converter in the description below. And if you're interested in trying out Video Proc Converter, you can do a seven day trial which does allow for a lot of these functionalities to be tested out for you to see if VideoProc Converter is right for you. So let's dive in and I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on how to do these four different functions with your GoPro video clips. So this is what the VideoProc website looks like. Currently VideoProc Converter is highlighted here on the main page, but if it's not highlighted there, just go to the top menu and you can find VideoProc Converter right there. So to download it, you'll just wanna click here on the free download. And then once it's finished downloading, you'll install it. And after installing, you're gonna see this screen right here. So for the four functions I'm gonna show you today, you'll wanna to click here on video. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of other features for this under the DVD downloader and recorder section. And I encourage you to check those out as well because there's a lot of these features that'll probably be valuable and useful to you as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on video here. And the first function I'm gonna perform is I'm going to convert an HEVC GoPro video file to an H.264. So HEVC is a codec that's used on the newer GoPros and it's used on that highest quality footage. So like 5.3K 60, 4K 120, and then some of the other 4K and 5.3K resolutions also use the HEVC. And HEVC is particularly taxing on a lot of computers a lot of people will find that this footage is very hard to edit because it does use so many system resources that unless you have a newer, fairly high powered machine, it's going to probably go very slow in your machine or potentially lock up your machine. So one of the benefits of this is you can add the video file and you can output it as an H.264 file. This is a lot less resource intensive on your computer. And if you're going to share the clip, it's a lot better to share the clip as an H.264 clip versus HEVC, because H.264 is a lot more compatible with social media platforms as well as YouTube. So the first clip we're gonna edit, we're gonna click here on video, and I've got five different test clips here together that we're gonna test out with these different functions today. For this particular one, we're gonna pick this one right here. This clip is a 5.3K 60 frames per second HEVC clip. So we're gonna click open. It's gonna load it right here. And as you can see, it says HEVC. And then our output over here is gonna be H.264. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna go up here to this edit button. We wanna click there. And we wanna check the format page. So on the format page, we wanna make sure it's set to high quality. You can use default if you want to, but default will be quite a bit lower quality, but I usually stick with the high quality because I still want it to be the highest quality possible. And for resolution, since we are converting it to H.264, I usually will convert it to 4K. In the aspect ratio, we want to keep the original. I'm going to keep the original frame rate. For the bit rate, you can do auto calculate or you can do manual. If you want to keep it auto calculate, that's fine. You're still going to get a great output, but oftentimes I like to do manual here and I like to do 50,000. I think that gives the best balance of quality without that lagginess. So 50,000 is what I'll usually put there if it's a 5.3K or 4K clip. 
Everything else looks good down here with the audio. So I'm gonna click apply to all. And we're just gonna double check to make sure it looks good here. And then we're gonna click run. And it's gonna take a little bit of time to output, but since this is a 10 second clip, it's not gonna usually take too long. Here it'll show the current time and the remaining time. So already it's 70, 80% done. And then when it's done exporting, it's gonna open the default folder you exported it to. All right, I'm gonna click back here. We're gonna do function number two. Function number two is gonna be removing fisheye from, a, from an individual clip. So I'm gonna click here on video. We're gonna click here on add video. And we're gonna add this clip for removing fisheye. And as you can see, there's definite fisheye in this because this railing here has this curve to it. So our subject of this frame was near the center. So there's not really a fisheye issue there, but the railing looking crooked, I would like to fix. So that's a preview of the clip there. So what we're gonna do to fix that fisheye is we're gonna either look under popular and fisheye is under my popular because I've used it a few times now. But if you don't see it there, you can go to toolbox and on toolbox, it's gonna be over here to the right. So we're gonna click on this. We're gonna click the cog in the upper right. We're gonna click the cog in the upper right. And we're gonna start making some modifications. All right, so the top one is the X coordinate. So if you drag this around, that's what happens when you do the X coordinate movement. And then we've got the Y coordinate, which is gonna be the up and down. So for now, we're gonna keep these both at 0.5 and we're gonna mess with the coefficient settings down here. These are gonna be the ones that are most likely gonna help us the most on this. So if you drag to the left, as you can see, we have a problem in the middle now when we drag that far left. So we don't wanna go that far. But if we go to the right, it actually makes the fisheye worse. So for now, we're gonna drag it to approximately there. And then we're gonna mess with the other coefficient next. So as you can see, if we go too far this way, it does that weird almost 360 camera look, but we're getting closer. So we're gonna go back a little bit there. All right, so that's starting to get that railing fairly straight, but now we need to go back up here and do some adjustments here. So I'm really liking how that's looking. I think we're getting really close now. All right, so let's drag it a little more here. All right, now that we've got that and I like how it looks, it's fairly straight. We can go back up here to the Y coordinate. We can make some fine tuning adjustments on that. So this is gonna be more this is gonna be more of a way to frame the clip and figure out where you want your subject and your background. So in this case, I really like that sky behind my subject. So I'd like a little bit more of that to show as well. Cause those clouds and the palm trees over the ocean look really cool. So we're gonna make sure plenty of that shows. And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna adjust the X just a little bit more. But as you can see, if we adjust it too much, we get the fisheye again. So we're gonna go back here kind of closer to the center. We're gonna go a little bit beyond that 50. I like that a lot right there. And for this one, we're gonna fine tune it until that railing looks pretty straight there. So overall that looks really straight now and it looks good. Our subject also doesn't have any weird distortion going on. There is still a little bit of a bow to the railing here. And sometimes in your clip, you're not going to be able to 100% fix the fisheye, but you're gonna be able to get close. So I'm gonna to toggle this a little bit once more. And I feel like at 0.18 right there, we are close enough that I'm ready to call this good. So once you have found what you like, you can click done down here. 
Which by the way, if you do want to cut any part of the clip out, you can do so by dragging this and it's gonna cut the clip. In this case, I wanna keep the entire eight seconds because I wanna use this and share this individually. So I'm gonna click done. We're gonna go up here to the edit and we're gonna take a look and make sure our finished product looks good here. It does. So we're gonna click done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click run right here. And this is gonna run. It's gonna open up our output folder. All right, so that is function number two. We're gonna go back here and I'm gonna show you how to do function number three. And for function number three, I'm going to show you how to remove shakiness and stabilize a clip. So we're gonna click here on video. And the clip we're gonna add for this is this one right here, which is a clip that was fairly shaky. It's one where I was hiking down into a volcanic crater in Hawaii, and I did not have stabilization turned on on my GoPro at all. So as you can see, it's got quite a bit of shakiness to it. So we wanna fix that. Now, it's usually not possible to 100% stabilize the clip. There is still gonna be some shakiness there, but we wanna make it better than what it is. That's the goal that we have. So first thing I wanna do here is I wanna go up here to edit and I wanna make sure our clip is going to be exported in the format that I want. So I'm gonna go here to high quality and we're gonna keep it the original frame rate. And in this case, I wanna keep the original resolution and we're gonna leave the audio settings alone and we're gonna let it auto calculate. So I'm gonna click apply to all. This clip was filmed in 1080p. So we're gonna keep it at the 1920 by 1080. This was on the GoPro Hero 7, by the way, in case you're wondering. I dug up some older footage here because a lot of my newer footage I've either stabilized on a gimbal or I've had HyperSmooth 4.0 turned on and I've not needed to stabilize it. So we're gonna go down here to Toolbox and we're gonna click on D-Shake. And then at D-Shake, we're gonna click on this cog. You'll want to play around with this a little bit because it's gonna depend on the shakiness in your clip and how shaky it is this way versus this way, and how much of the diagonal shaking issue you have. So this top one, you'll want to play around with a little bit to see if 10 helps you better, or if one helps you all the way down here, or if somewhere in the middle helps. So in this case, I think at 10 looks the best for this particular one. For the accuracy, I recommend always setting it to 15. This is the accuracy, the detection process. Uh, 15 is gonna do the best. For the step size, this you'll want to play around with as well. So sometimes setting it to one is gonna yield better results. Other times setting it to 10 is gonna help too. In this case, I think 10 works the best. And then for minimum contrast, I recommend putting this down to zero. We're gonna click done. And now that we've done that, we're gonna go here and we're gonna click run. And this one of all of the functions I find can take a little bit longer sometimes because it is doing a lot in that video for stabilization. So this one do expect it to take a little bit more. And by the way, I am not using any special graphics card or CPU. I'm using one of the AMD APUs, which has onboard graphics. So I don't have anything high-end in this PC tower that I'm using. It is the uh, 5700G CPU with integrated AMD graphics. All right, so that clip is done exporting. We're gonna take a look at it here. It's definitely a lot better with the shakiness. You know, there's still some movement to the clip because it was very bad to begin with, but there are definitely parts of this that are usable now. And finally, function number four I'm going to show you is how to cut a clip. So we're gonna click here on video. And this time we are gonna add a clip here of an ocean wave. So what I wanna do is I want to cut this clip. There's a great start to it where there's this huge wave and then it kind of levels out. And I'd like to cut it so I have those first five seconds or so. I don't need the entire eight or nine seconds, I just want the first five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here to trim and I'm gonna click on that and select the cog here. And so that's the start of it where I wanna keep it and then I wanna stop it right about there. So we're gonna drag this back to five seconds. And I'm gonna make sure everything looks good. So the start time is zero, the end time is five. 
and it's going to stop right there. So we're going to click done. And up here, I'm going to make sure my codec looks good. I'm going to make sure the resolution, this was a 2.7K clip. We're going to make sure that looks good as well. And everything looks good there. So we're going to go here and we're going to click run. And this is going to do the export. It's going to go very fast. And here's our finished product. Let's take a look at it. That is our five second clip, exactly as I edited it. So if you're a GoPro user and you haven't checked out VideoProc Converter, I definitely encourage you to check it out and see if it's right for you. VideoProc Converter is definitely a great tool when you just want to do some of those small minor touch-ups on your GoPro clips before you share them. Mm -hmm.